Hi, welcome back to my channel, Dysphagia Help with Food and Drinks. It's a channel designed to make people feel more confident and adapting food and drinks for people with dysphagia. Is it just me or does the word dysphagia, dysphagia, does it sound complex, complicated? And who's ever heard of it unless you're a medical professional? Should we ask a few people and find out? What does dysphagia mean? I have no idea. Dysphagia, dysphagia. Is that where you can't talk properly and your mouth droops to one side? Absolutely no idea. So if you're like them, and like I was just a few years ago, don't worry, that's exactly why we're making this video. I'm going to talk through what the word dysphagia means and what the normal process of eating, drinking and swallowing is. That way we can know what dysphagia is, how it goes wrong. I'm going to do it at a basic level and I'm going to simplify a lot of the medical wording and the medical terms so that it's understandable for the most amount of people. Obviously if you want to know more, if you want to look deeper at a more complex level into the information, into the process, you can contact your local speech therapy service or I will put a few um, references underneath of places you can look to find out more information. Just to remind you, I'm a speech and language therapist and I work in the United Kingdom. I'm making this channel in my own time so it's not connected with any local trust or organisation. This is supposed to be there to help you, to make you feel more confident, but it's not specific to your needs, it's not medical guidance or information. So if you have any problems at all, contact your local NHS service, ask for an assessment with a speech and language therapist and get your needs met. Okay, let's get going then. So how do we swallow the food and drinks that we eat? The process of eating, drinking and swallowing is really complex. It involves things that are under our control that we can start and stop and move and change however we want but it also involves reflexes. That's something that the body automatically triggers and something that we can't stop once we've started it. It involves more than 30 different nerves and muscles in the process. Wow! The whole reason why we do it from a medical perspective is to safely transport food and drink or medication from our plate down through the body into the stomach and to protect the airway as we do it. So we'll split the process into four stages. Let's have a look. Stage one of the swallowing process happens in the mouth. The main aim of this process when we're eating food is for you to chew and to prepare that food so it's small, it's moist and it's soft so that it's safe enough to travel through the throat down into the stomach. Now, the timing of this phase, how much we chew that food, depends on what the texture of that food is and how difficult it is to prepare it and how close to that soft, thick, smooth, moist texture it is when we put it in our mouth. If something's very hard, it's really dry, um, it's really tough, it's going to take more chewing. You know yourself when you're eating something and it's really, really chewy, that it takes a lot of chewing to get it soft enough. If something's soft, and smooth and moist, you don't need to do a, a lot of chewing at all, do you? So the oral phase is all about preparing that food. When you're having a drink, the muscles of your face and your mouth are pivotal in controlling that liquid. Keeping it in a place where you want it till you're ready to move it backwards to swallow. Stage two is about using your tongue to transport that food or that drink back to the back of the mouth so that it's ready to go down your throat. Now the timing of this again can vary because if you've got something that's quite thick and slow moving it'll take a little bit more time than something that's very thin like a thin liquid like a drink of water which obviously runs really quickly. Your tongue's really clever in this stage as the tongue will go up to the roof of your mouth at the front of the tongue and gradually raise so it almost creates it pushes things to the back or with a liquid it might create almost like a slide from the front of your mouth being the highest 
to the back of your mouth being lowest for that water to run down to go into your throat. These two stages are under our control, so they're not the reflex part. They're the bit that we can change, we can slow down, we can speed up dependent on what we're eating or what we're drinking. Stage three, are you still with me? This is all about food traveling through the throat down into the tube which connects with the stomach. This part is a reflex, so once it's triggered we can't stop it. So this stage has two parts. One's about getting that food or drink or medication through the throat down into the tube that goes to your stomach. The second bit's about protecting your airway, stopping anything going down the wrong way. You know how you felt it yourself when it goes down the wrong way, it's not very nice and it's not good for the body. So it's all about protecting the airway and traveling the food down the right tube. So to start with, the small flap at the top of your mouth at the back lifts up to reach the back of your throat and stop any food or drink going up into your nose. That's pretty clever, isn't it? The back of your tongue thrusts towards the back of your throat to create momentum and to push that food. And we're off. The muscles in your throat contract to push and squeeze and create that momentum so that that food will travel down the throat towards the stomach. Gravity helps here as well because it helps everything to move downwards. That's why it's so important to sit upright when you're eating or drinking. So now let's think about how your body's going to protect your lungs and stop anything going down your airway. Number one, it closes off your voice box. Now what you think of you as your voice box is actually what we call the vocal folds. So the pieces of muscle that can meet in the middle over your airway and close to stop anything falling down that hole, to stop anything going below them. The actual airway is pulled upwards and forwards by contractions of muscles under your chin, which tucks your airway up and under the base of your tongue. And so this moves it out of the way as well. You also have a small piece of cartilage which flaps over that opening as a third way to protect it and to stop anything going down there. It's all go, because at the same time, there's a small piece of muscle which is constricted when you're not using it and you're not needing to swallow, almost like the top of a drawstring bag. When your airway at the front moves up and forward, it opens this, so it's like opening a drawstring bag. So it's really big space and it's nice and open for that food to then drop into a perfect timing. Now, believe it or not, all this happens in around one second of time. Wow, isn't the body amazing? The final stage is when the food or drink passes from just below that sphincter, that piece of muscle we've just talked about, down the tube to the top of your stomach. This tube's called the esophagus. At the bottom of this tube is also a piece of muscle that's closed and opens like a drawstring bag that allows the food to pass into the stomach. Now again, that's closed normally when you're not swallowing. And it's when there's problems in this that people get heartburn and people get reflux because what reflux and heartburn and pain there is a sign of is that that sphincter at the bottom of that tube is not working right and it's letting the acid from your stomach come back up the tube and burn the inside of that tube. That gives you the heartburn feeling. Transport of food down this tube is helped by gravity but the main way that it transports is through a wave-like muscle contraction that squeezes it down the tube into the tummy. Now imagine when you're at the end of your toothpaste and you use your fingers to squeeze the bottom of the tube and to push up the tube and when you get to the top, the toothpaste, the last bit, comes out, doesn't it? Well, it's that sort of wave-like contraction that the body amazingly creates to help food travel down that tube to the bottom so it can go into your stomach. So that's the process of swallowing outlined in four stages. Isn't it unbelievable? It's something that we do every day, so many times a day, and you never think about it, do you? Because it's just so automatic. So what is dysphagia? Well, you've seen and we've talked through what happens when we eat, drink and swallow. 
And so dysphagia is defined as a problem in any stage, any of those things we've talked through, any stage of the process of eating, drinking and swallowing. So if somebody has a difficulty in the first stage, preparing the food, someone else might have a difficulty in the stage where it travels through our throat and where we protect our airway. Both people, we would say, had dysphagia, but each have a different type of dysphagia and the treatment that they would need would be very different and it's all tailored to the specific area of difficulty that they have. So dysphagia is defined as a disorder of the process of eating, drinking and swallowing. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog and found it informative. I hope it's helped you to understand a little bit more. Don't forget to like, please comment on how you found it and please subscribe to the channel for more videos. Thank you.